today the plan is to make one of the EDC everyday carry uh, pry bars. I've got a piece of 1095 high carbon steel here. It's 1 16th of an inch thick, 2 inches wide, and 36 inches long. I uh, just got it in from Jantz Supply a few days ago. And I've got a couple knives I'm going to make from it, but today I don't really have time to make a knife. But I want to make something. So, we're going to make one of these pry bars real quick. First, I'm going to use this Dremel tool. I normally use the angle grinder, but the Dremel is its easier for thin projects. It's easier to move around and, and fit into smaller places. It's got a metal... See if you can see that metal easy lock cutting bit. I bought a pack of five of these, and they're pretty good for thin steel. I wouldn't recommend them for bigger projects, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and then I'll show you how to finish it up. There's our little piece of steel that we're about to turn into a pry bar. It's incredibly hot as you can imagine. So, all right, I'm gonna move over into the shop and we'll pick up there. All right, now to pick up where we left off earlier, we now have our piece of steel that we're gonna use for the pry bar. We got a disc sander, five inch disc sander that desperately needs a new wheel. Or a new disc, I guess. I didn't notice that it was that torn up. But it should be fine for what we're going to do, the, the minimal amount of grinding. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that, and we'll turn this thing into a um, pry bar or chisel, whatever you want to call it. going to have a chisel grind. Um, um, if you're watching this you're probably familiar with a chisel. Um, a chisel grind essentially is a grind on one side of the 
the blade or whatever you want to call it, it's going to make it look like a chisel. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the actual belt sander so we can do that. see here we've got a nice chisel grind on it now there we go there's a nice little bevel we've got our rounded corner for our key ring and let's see if you can see the side of it you can kind of see how the the bevel works and we're not wanting this to be sharp we're not going to use it for a chisel um, per se we're using it as a pry bar but you want to be able to get up under something uh, if that's what you're doing with it so anyway I'm gonna smooth out these corners real quick and then we're gonna go drill all right now we have our nice little chisel we've made I've rounded all the corners so it's not too sharp and we're gonna drill the hole now for that I'm just gonna take a piece of plywood Stick it under there. Alright, now I've got my drill bit. We're going to try to drill this hole. It's very helpful if you have a little center punch so you can keep this thing from walking around on you. I'm going to do the best I can to just keep it in place. Well, that didn't go well. We've drilled our hole now. And uh, I'm going to patch up this injury real quick. Because what happened was the chisel that I said wasn't that sharp is apparently sharp enough. So it, uh, you know, the, the drill started grabbing towards the end and just uh, spun it around and it hit me in the finger. And, and now we have this. So I'll be right back. Anyway. Forget what I said earlier about heat treating. Here's what we're gonna do next. This thing's already strong enough that I don't need a heat treat on it. I'm just gonna take some sandpaper. Oh, uh, let's see. Take some 800 grit. 800 grit sandpaper. We're just gonna smooth it out and make it look a little better. Take the uh, the edge of it and slide it this way, and it'll give us a different pattern. That way, you can kind of 
really see the detail in it as we go forward. It's hard for me to get it all close, flat. The idea it's got, uh, if you're looking at it this way, the pattern goes across it on the handle portion and then the chisel has uh, its scratches going up or its sanding paper lines, whatever you want to call them. Anyway, that is a finished chisel or pry bar, whatever you want to call it. You can use it for prying on anything. I'm going to show you. Use it right here on this can. But I'll probably use it for mostly. It fits right up under there and you can just twist it and there you go. So that's how to make a homemade pry bar for your key ring. Hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, go ahead and subscribe so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. And go ahead and like this video if you will. It would really help me out. I appreciate it.